Please be seated. We gather this morning for another important milestone in our national development as we celebrate. So we not only participate in this the first, but we celebrate the first national research conference. And to help us do so, it is now my pleasure to invite to the microphone for our welcome address this morning, Dr. Marriott Simon. Good morning. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. Protocol having been established, I would just like to reiterate uh, to welcome His Excellency, the Governor General, Sir Colville Young, to this morning's proceedings and to all other invited guests. <coughs> Excuse me. On behalf of the President of the National University of Belize, Professor Emeritus Clemens Sankat, I bring greetings and bid you welcome. President Sankat, on his behalf, I'm apologizing for being unable to be present here today to participate in this national research conference. Today marks an important event in Belize for it represents the hosting of the first Belize National Research Conference. <coughs> Excuse me. Research is about inquiry, and inquiry is about discovery. Here at the University of Belize, we have not focused much on research, but it actually plays a small part of our overall academic activity. Recently, our board approved our five-year transformational plan in which we have made a deliberate effort to focus our efforts on research. We recognize our responsibility to generate new learning and discovery which must come from higher institutions of learning. It is therefore our mandate as a major player in national development to focus and refocus our efforts on research. Research does not originate without deliberate effort. In facilitating that effort, we must create a new culture, a culture which is focused on research. Now one may ask, what is a culture of research? Essentially, I can define it in two ways. One, it is drawn from the definition of culture, which, as you know, is a system of widely shared and strongly held values. Therefore, a culture of research would be a system which places great value on conducting and communicating scholarly research. The University of Belize's five-year transformational plan mentioned earlier identifies several new programs which will come on stream over the next few years. Notable among these many new programs are going to be master's degrees. These graduate degrees will be primarily research-based and eventually will, we hope, ultimately lead to PhD degrees. Initially, it will be an incremental approach, but a necessary approach nonetheless so that quality and rigor is built into those programs. This represents a major shift, as well as, or as we call it, a transformational leap in the focus of the university, and one which we believe is long overdue. For the UB, it is not simply a matter of initiating graduate programs, but also of encouraging our faculty to not only conduct research, but also to publish in relevant, reputable journals. This has been lacking at the University of Belize and will be addressed as we move forward in implementing, and implementing sorry, our transformational plan through our new graduate programs and, of course, new undergraduate programs. So creating that culture of research requires that we put in place the enabling environment which will facilitate such a shift in how we operate here at the university. Creating that culture of research, which we hope is going to be done within the next few years. The literature identifies several important factors which will foster the creation of such an environment. Firstly, 
the institutional and the unit leaders must set clear research goals and communicate them effectively. Secondly, to allocate the necessary resources for faculty training and support. Thirdly, open and collaborative personal relationships among faculty members. And fourthly, this is a process which is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take years to develop and change that, create and or change that culture. So over the next two days, you will be engaged in presentations on diverse topics. Research here at the university is a nascent activity and we believe it must be cultivated if we are to create that culture of research. It is our duty to nurture and foster its development in the interest of national development. So in closing, and on behalf of the president, the administration, the faculty and staff of the National University of Belize, I extend once again a warm welcome to you all. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Dr. Simon, Vice President of the University of Belize. Now that we've been formally welcomed, it is my pleasure to invite to the microphone Ms. Sapna Budrani, Administrator of the National Institute of Culture and History, for her remarks. Welcome. I feel like this mic is in my face. Thank you. Welcome. It is an honor for me to start by acknowledging the presence of the Governor General of Belize, His Excellency Sir Colville Young, Heads of Institution, I guess I get a retake. <laughs> Welcome. Can everyone hear me? I guess you do. It is an honor for me to start by acknowledging the presence of the Governor General of Belize, the Excellency Sir Colville Young, Heads of Institution Dr. Simone, Vice President of the University of Belize Dr. Eve Aird, Provost of Galen University, Ms. Jane Bennett, Head of the University of West Indies Open Campus. Our keynote speaker, Dr. Joseph Palacio. Good morning to you. I would also like to say good morning to the members of the Na Belize National Research Conference Working Committee, researchers, lecturers, students, and members of the public. I would like to convey my best regards on behalf of the Minister of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture, Honorable Patrick Farber, the Chief Executive Officers, Ms. Deborah Domingo and Adil Katsim, the National Institute of Culture and History's Board of Directors, President and Directors. From our perspective at Niche, today marks one of the many, the many milestones in history of Belize. Indeed, when Niche was conceived as an institution, one of its core mandates involved and continues to conduct and supervise archaeological, cultural, and historical research on and about belief. This in mind was a continuation of earlier efforts regarding a self-exploration of Belize's characters and origins by institutions such as St. John's College and University of Belize when they developed the Journal of Belizean Studies and Belizean Affairs respectively. It is also a continuation of the work of the Society of the Promotion of Research and Education, who organized the annual conferences in the 1990s. Today, the landscape has changed, and the collaboration of NICH, UB, and UE, and Galen is in evidence that there are several institutions that have a responsibility to teach and conduct research in Belize. Even so, we have recognized that individually, the institutions 
are unable to do so by themselves. All that is needed to be done for the purpose of aiding our country's development. So this conference is a first step towards collaboration, capacity building, capacity sharing with respect to research in Belize. It is an, it is an important step because we realize together that Belize's development, like many developing countries around the world, is reliant on research-based recommendations. And we are prepared to assist our country with meeting its development goals and in dealing with some of our difficult social and economic realities. I myself must admit that I'm a relative newcomer prepared to support change for the benefit of development of our country, Belize. As such, I'm very happy to know of and to support the initiatives taking place. At NICH, our very own Institute of Archaeology has developed a solid tradition of research about our Maya heritage, and similarly, the Institute for Social and Cultural Research has been diligent at work on mapping Belize's cultural landscape, assisting communities with the safeguarding of our intangible heritage and researching aspects of our country's history. In the last year and a half, the experience of this work is now coming to light. Since along with the leadership of the Ministry of Education, we're working to introduce for the first time a four-year curriculum for secondary schools which carries the name Belizean Studies. I have also noted the efforts for faculty research conferences organized by the University of Belize, Galen University, and University of the West Indies, Open Campus. We're excited to have able to partner with your institutions on this very important initiative. I am aware that the road to getting to this point has not been an easy one. But in knowing this fact, I would like to propose that similarly, the challenges ahead should not threaten the viability of what has taken some time to nurture. This, confirm, this conference provides a platform for youths to interact with senior researchers and pursue their research interests. With that said, I cannot say how very pleased I am that we are here now, that we are prepared to build this relationship so that all of Belize can benefit from our efforts. On a final note, the public showcase of these research papers has as goal public education, but we also envision a space where mentorship can help among our researchers, where networks of skilled persons can be established to address the development needs of our country. We as NICH desire a vibrant space where our society can look to our academics to help solve crises. With this in mind, Belize's future is bright as a result of the first Belize National Research Conference. I thank you all for coming. I, take this, I would like to also thank the staff of NICH and the Belize Archive and Re Research Records, Belize Archive and Records, for dealing with us whenever we need our research papers and putting our research together. I wish you all the best over the next two days. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Bedrani from Niche. And continuing with wor words of welcome um, and expectation for the, week for the weekend, the next person at the mic will be Mrs. Jane Bennett, head of the University of the West Indies Open Campus, sharing her remarks. Let's welcome to the microphone, Ms. Jane Bennett. Good morning. Your Excellency, the Governor General of Belize, Sir Colville Young, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Dr. Joseph Palacio, keynote speaker, the Belmopan City Council, Councillor Jem Pascasio, Brother Michael Kemp, Dr. Marriott Simon, Dr. Cynthia Eard, Ms. Sapna Budran, other special invited guests, students, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning again. 
Let me first applaud the organizers of this extremely important and significant event, the time for which has been much too long in coming. However, as it is said, nothing happens before its time. The University of the West Indies Open Campus Belize is happy to be a partner in this initiative because in the first instance, research is a component of the mission of the University of the West Indies. Secondly, as some of you present here may know, the University of the West Indies has a rich history of conducting and supporting research across the Caribbean, region, and beyond. Again, some or many, as the case may be of you, may have either reached out to UWE for taking on a research project or projects in education, medicine, law, or other developmental work or venture of one sort or the other for or in Belize. Undoubtedly, the University of the West Indies has contributed significantly to the development of the country of Belize with research in various areas over the years, as the record will show. So what really is all the huff and puff about this thing called research? Well, have you ever heard anyone ask, where's the proof? Where's the data? Or more pointedly, where is the scientific data? Have you also heard, are you sure about this? Or is this purely anecdotal? What does all of this mean to you and to me as Belizeans? Well, according to Albert Einstein, and I quote, if we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? Unquote. Neil Hurstein once said, and I quote, Research is formalized curiosity. It is poking and prying with a purpose." Unquote. I now invite you to review with me a few definitions of the word research. Lex Warrior, online law journal, defines research as follows. Research. The word is quite familiar to all of us, right? Yeah. Research, that is what we're trained to do or asked to do in our PhD program or while writing our dissertation in the final semester or even for a small project or assignment. From school level until date, we have been familiar with this word. So what is research? What does it really signify? How would it be? Why do we give so much of emphasis to such an exercise? Well, let's have a look. Research means the systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. In other words, it is the collection of evidence or information for ascertaining an assumption of verifying some hypotheses. That's a lot of words, right? But in simple words, we can say research is the combination of re and search, which means the repetition of search. It means a search for facts, answers to questions, and solutions to problems. I could go on and on with more definitions, but we'll stop here in the interest of time. But haven't you grown weary of hearing the words, there is no data, there is no data available for Belize? Well, I have. We need to change this, folks, and we need to do so rapidly. Belize is on the map. We are part of this thing called the global village and we have to measure up, step up to the plate, or whichever way we want to say that, within our own context, of course. Countless studies have been done in Belize by Belizeans and non-Belizeans on many topics. Was a copy ever shared with our library and our relevant institutions? If not, why not? For those that were shared, who knows about these and where are they located? Is there easy access to them? Are they used in our educational system to enhance learning and enrich personal and professional development? 
who is responsible and accountable for all of this? There are many questions and perhaps not enough answers. The important thing now is to get it right. This conference and the intention of making it an annual event is a wonderful start. Where will the papers being presented here today and tomorrow go after the conference? Who will know where they are and who will use them? The answers and necessary actions to make this a national and a continuing priority is critical and it is essential. Do not allow the ball to drop on this. Let's not let it fall between the cracks. The University of the West Indies Open Campus believes recommits to partnering in this endeavor, wishing all of us a successful first Belize National Research Conference, and I thank you. Thanks again, Mrs. Jane Bennett, head of the University of the West Indies Open Campus. At this time, I would just like to draw your attention to the presence of the key organizers of this first research conference. Um, I'd like them to maybe just stand and quickly be acknowledged. Uh, Ms. Sherry Gibbs from Galen University. <laughs> Mr. John Flores from the University of Belize. <laughs> Dr. Angel Cal from the History Department at the University of Belize. <laughs> and Mr. Nigel Encalada from ICR at Niche. One quick uh, matter of housekeeping. Um, those of you who are wearing the bands that you received um, when you registered, those will give you access to snacks at snack time as well as lunch at lunch time. Um, those who don't have a band can feel free to touch base with the registration table, and I'm sure we will be able to help you out. Okay? Um, and so it is time to bring our brief opening ceremony to closure, and it is my pleasure indeed to pass on that task to our dear friend, Dr. Cynthia Eve Aird, Provost of Galen University, for our official closing remarks. Good morning. Protocol having been established, please allow me to recognize a few of the uh, three of the giants on whose shoulders I stand. I want to recognize Dr. Sir, the Sir Ex Excellency Dr. Colville Young, who was the first president of the University College of Belize, Dr. Angel Cal, its first academic dean and its first president of UB and Dr. Joseph Palacio. All three of these gentlemen played a significant role in shaping my life as a professional in higher education, and I think the lives of many people who continue to work in higher education in Belize. Thank you. Late one afternoon in mid-January 2017, Mr. Nigel Nicolada, the director of the Institute, Institute for Social and Cultural Research, called me to ask if Galen University would be interested in jointly hosting a national social science conference along with UB and UA's open campus. Mr. Nicolada explained that the intent of the proposed conference was to initiate a national dialogue on social issues impacting Belize and to cultivate reform and research to inform process and policy in addressing these issues. Galen University immediately welcomed the idea and committed to co-hosting and serving on the planning committee. Even though we are a small university with very limited resources, but a big heart, our commitment to Belize is a driving force behind everything we do. Our mission of providing an exciting and stimulating learning environment, innovative and supporting teaching, scholarship, and active service to the community with a unique focus on sustainable development throughout our courses, 
programs and service. Our mission mandated us to say yes. And recent events have affirmed our commitment. Please allow me to have a little use this platform to comment on some things. Last Friday, we at Galen participated in the third annual 20,000 strong march and rally. As you may know, there has been significant debate on social media on the relative value of the rally. And as is not uncommon in Belize, some of the criticism was quoted in heavy derision and politicized. Sadly, the media reports during a news broadcast on Friday evening also questions its value, choosing to focus on the many high schools that participated in the march as opposed to what they interpreted as the too few consenting adults who marched. The news treated the march as the main event and failed to report on the substance of the rally itself. In fact, 20,000 Strong was not just a march. The rally provided a time and space for us adults in our respective capacities to hear from our youth, to learn about their realities of life in this jewel of ours today, about their perceptions of what is wrong in our society and what can and must be done to correct these wrongs. Most importantly, it afforded some very inspiring young people a platform to speak to us adults and leaders, and for us adults and leaders and policymakers and practitioners to listen and act. I was inspired by the amount of men who chose to be there and show solidarity, and I was very inspired by the young speakers including the two young male high school students who asked not to be discounted in providing solutions and correcting the gender imbalance in Belize. I myself don't like marches much, but sometimes we, the nation, need to come together and listen to each other, and in this case, to our youth. Friday morning was one of the most valuable and inspiring mornings I have had in a long time, and Lisa Schumann's manifesto for Linda was the cream on, on the top for me. As a lifetime educator and practitioner in higher education, I have worked with colleagues and students who have been battered simply for daring to want a university education to provide a better life for their children. And domestic violence in all its forms is a blight upon Belize. The heavy criticism on social and other media and the public disregard of the rally is a symptom of what is wrong in our society. We sit back and criticize and deride, but do nothing. And very often, the loudest voices are the emptiest vessels. Colleagues, my fellow Belizeans and friends of Belize, the current killing spree, I have seen some posts where people are calling last week's carnage urban terrorism. The urban terrorism, the domestic violence, the human trafficking, the child abuse and child endangerment, the countless burglaries, the high suicide rate, one attempted suicide in every five days. Most of you will know that my child took his life, so this is a very special cause for me. The bullying in schools, the need for a more meaningful and re relevant educational experience for our young, the future leaders of Belize, all the ugliness and hopelessness that a young speaker shared in her ode to Belize last Friday. We are remiss in politicizing these social ills. This is not merely a red, blue, or green matter. It is not a matter solely to be corrected in our schools, as I have heard some talk shows suggest, or in the churches, or in the House of Representatives, and by our security forces. And this is not a new problem. This is a part of a long trend that has defined our culture and psyche as a nation, and it is strangling us. It is a national matter, and we must all work together to heal the wrongs in our Belize, our home. We must come together as a nation to protect and preserve Belize. Our divisiveness only makes things worse. I know that in these remarks, I am meant to say thank you to the organizers, and I will do that. But I feel compelled to share this with you to illustrate for you why we are here. It is our hope that the proceedings of this and future conferences will begin to address some of the problems we face. While the current measures being employed may staunch the flow of blood, 
the issues will remain and will continue to fester. The intent of the organizing committee of this first National Social Science Conference is to use this platform as the impetus to develop and sustain a research capacity within the social sciences and related disciplines, which could guide development. It is also our hope that this may result in the establishment of a national research council. I urge you to join Mr. Encalada, Dr. Cal, John Flores, Dr. Saunders, and Sherry Gibbs in creating this research council. At this time, I would like to express sincere gratitude to the organizing committee for their unflagging support of this idea and seeing it through to its culmination today. I know this has often been an uphill battle for them, and they struggled even while meeting all the many commitments of their roles as university instructors and administrators. I also thank Dr. Charmaine Saunders in her dual capacity as a program officer for UA's Open Campus, along with uh, her supervisor, Ms. Bennett, um, as well as it, Dr. Saunders is also the chair of ATLIB, where she promoted the conference heavily. I thank the University of Belize for allowing us to use the auditorium today. Lastly, my sincere appreciation to the presenters who are sharing their work with us today. It is my pleasure to declare this first Belize National Social Research Conference open, and I pray that this is the first of many conferences which will be supported by the Belize National Research Council. If it is, then I will have made history in declaring the first conference open. What an honor. Thank you. This, the first research conference, one member led the push for it to serve as a catalyst for the establishment of a national research council. Please join me in welcoming to the podium past president, history professor, and researcher, Dr. Angel Cal, to introduce today's keynote speaker. Dr. Cal. Good morning, everyone. For me, it is always, always a distinct honor to introduce a scholar, a colleague, a patriot, a friend of Belize, a friend of the Caribbean, a friend of Latin America, a gentleman of the world. Dr. Joseph Orlando Palacio has a solid academic background. He studied at the University of Toronto, where he got his bachelor's degree at the University of Manitoba in Canada, where he got his master's degree, and at the University of California in Berkeley, where he got his Doctor of Philosophy degree. His dissertation there was Food and Social Relations in a Garifuna Village. Dr. Palacio has served Belize starting as a cooperative officer, working with the people. He worked as an archaeology, archaeological commissioner with the government of Belize. And for 21 years, he worked as the resident tutor of the University of the West Indies School of Continuing Studies from where he retired in 2003. Dr. Palacio is a networker in the sense of being 
connected to professional associations, is a member of the Latin American Studies Association, the Caribbean Studies Association, the American Anthropology Association, among others. He has earned several fellowships. And I'll just mention the last one that is in the list. The Andrew Mellon Fellowship for Archival Research at the Vatican Film Library in June of 2000. Dr. Palacio has researched and published, and I will just mention the last three. In 2005, he edited the Garifuna, A Nation Across Borders, Essays in Social Anthropology. In 2007, he co-edited with Barbara Balboni, Taking Stock, Belize at 25 Years of Independence. And in 2011, he co-authored with Carlson Tuttle, Judy Loom, Garifuna Continuity in Land, Barranco Settlement and Land Use, 1862 to 2000. Dr. Palacio has written several monographs. I'll just give you a, a sample of two. Development in Belize, 1960 to 1980. Socio-Economic Integration of Central American Immigrants in Belize, published in 1989. Dr. Palacio has published many, many articles, 30 of them in peer-reviewed journals, 11 in non-refereed journals, in archaeology, food ethnography, migration, refugees, urban and rural community development, indigenous peoples, primary health care, child abuse and neglect, and continuing studies. At scholarly conferences, Dr. Palacio has presented over 40 papers. He has also been a teacher and mentor he taught at the University of California, Berkeley, as a graduate student, at McGill University for one semester, at the UWI School of Continuing Studies, at Galen University, and at the University of Belize. Joe, as we, found, as we fondly call him, has served in local, in national, in regional, and international bodies. And I'll just give you a couple. He is a member of the World Council of Indigenous Peoples, the executive council of that body. He participated in the Global Initiatives for Health for traditional health systems based at Oxford University. In 2003, Dr. Palacio received the Belize Tourism Cultural Development Award. And it goes on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome to the podium a colleague, a scholar, an accomplished professional, a patriot, a friend, Dr. Joseph Orlando Palacio. Wait, be nothing. Good morning. I am grateful to Nigel 
Escalante for inviting me to give this keynote address. He is the director of the Institute for Social and Cultural Research and a member of the working group that is hosting this first Belize National Research Conference under the theme, Research and Development in Belize. I congratulate the three institutions and their hardworking leaders who have uh, put together a consortium dedicated to scientific research in Belize. These institutions are the National Institute of Culture and History, the University of Belize, Galen University, and the UWI Open Campus. My hope is that the collaboration will spread to other institutions and will grow from strength to strength. My second hope is that there will be wider collaboration with institutions of higher learning within the larger Caribbean and Central American region, notably Jamaica, Cuba, Mexico, and Central America. In Central America, I single out Costa Rica, Panama, Honduras, and of course, Guatemala. It is interesting to note that this month of March 2018 would seem to be the open season for research in Belize. Less than three weeks ago, there was another conference held here in Belmopan, focusing on research co-sponsored by East Carolina University and the University of Belize. I was fortunate enough to deliver a paper at that conference. From the list of presenters for this conference, there were also others who presented there. This is indeed the season for research conferences in Belize. My hope is that there will be a repeat every year so persons can put the time period in their annual calendar of events. There is a panel taking place tomorrow, Thursday, at 425, entitled Belize National Research Council. I'm signaling to Nigel that I would like to participate in that panel where I can elaborate on some of the ideas that I'm sharing in this address. In preparing this address, Nigel has asked that I should present some historical reflections as well as perspectives on the role that research has played and will continue to do so in Belize's development. To introduce this topic, I refer to a paper entitled Anthropology in Belize, which I published in the journal Current Anthropology in 1976. I encourage researchers to read this article as it argued for a focus on several topics needed, as needed to help us proceed at that time from the darkness of colonialism toward the light of nationhood. The exercise also helped me a great deal as I was contemplating my own switch from archaeology to social anthropology. As a backdrop to the article in Current Anthropology, let me elaborate briefly on the socio-political context in which Belize found herself in the late 1960s and early 1970s. We found ourselves on a difficult, slippery, and even scary roadmap toward independence. Powerful friends of Belize, mainly the United States and the United Kingdom, were ambivalent in their support for Belize to proceed toward territorial sovereignty. This, in turn, meant that Belizeans at all costs should display our unambiguous dedication to our dear motherland, Belize. Questions surrounding any divisiveness fostered for generations through colonialism, be it ethnic identity, skin color, geographical origin, needed to be downplayed. The need to weld into a strong nation remained prominent. Our national heroes, George Price and Philip Goldson, remained sterling examples of whom and what the new Belize would be. My contribution as a Belizean social scientist in the formation of the new Belize was to demonstrate that whatever differences remained among us would be overcome by complete dedication to the new nation state called Belize. This was the primary aim of my 1976 article in Current Anthropology. But what in fact has happened by today 
in the year 2018, almost 40 years after we celebrated our glorious independence. The sectoral divisions among us have become as deep as they had been before independence. The lines of separation by skin color, ethnicity, wealth, geographical location have become sharper among us. As an indicator, the scourge of gun violence now reigns separate, sorry, now reigns supreme in our urban communities. In many of these communities, we are too scared to venture into the neighborhood after dark. What suggestions do I have for the young, the bright researchers among us? The first is to prepare carefully in your academic formation as a researcher. Take as many courses in research methods in as many disciplines as you can, including the social and natural sciences. In doing so, make sure that you qualify yourself in quantitative and qualitative research methods. Your aim should be to build expertise in as many of the following topics as possible. And I have a few bullets here. Understanding poverty and how the wealthy perpetuate poverty so they could become more wealthy. Understanding the working of our political structure so that the political elite and the economic elite continue to work together for the well-being of the fewer and fewer. Understanding how the culture of corruption has so infiltrated all levels of our society that it has already become the future well-being of our children and grandchildren. And with such knowledge, engage in all efforts to uproot the scourge from among us as early as possible. Understanding how in present day Belize, if you are born black, female, indigenous Maya or Garifuna, you have greater chance of growing up and dying in extreme poverty. Understanding how our southern coastal communities from Barranco to Monkey River have become depopulated while the surrounding lands and keys are being bought over by foreigners and well-connected Belizeans. And finally, understanding how Belizeans have lost de facto control over our traditional lands along the Sarstone River. And here I can talk quite openly because I live in the village of Barranco, which is the last village along the border before the Sarstoon, and it is pathetic to see us losing our lands. You will note that I emphasize the social sciences in the above examples. There is no need to emphasize, however, that the natural sciences are also crying out for much attention. I make brief reference to fields such as climate change, the well-being of our reef, our rainforests, and other ecosystems, and most especially, the continuing erosion within highly inhabited areas such as Belize City, Dangriga, and Corozal Town. Having shared some thoughts with our young and gifted researchers, what do I have to say to the institutions that provide the appropriate context for training? It may be difficult and costly for each of the institutions to engage in the highest level of training that is so vital for the necessary courses. I suggest that the institutions, University of Belize, Galen, and UWI, redouble their efforts at collaboration among themselves, as well as with foreign institutions that may be interested and willing to participate. Along with the challenges of actual teaching, the institutions should also be working seriously on a journal where they publish their own research while encouraging their students to also engage quite early in their careers of publishing their works so that as many interested persons have, so that as many interested persons here and abroad can see what studies are being produced. I thank you.
we want to thank Dr. Joseph Palacio for his words. Um, let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> he has been one of the pillars of, of research and education in this country. In fact, I believe he taught me and Dr. Moore and several others in, the, in archaeology in this country. Um, I was telling him earlier uh, that when I was 10 years old, I went to St. Antonich with a class trip. I think at that time it used to be known as Benkebejo Hill. Um, and he was up there. I didn't know who he was at the time, a 10-year-old kid. And uh, he was pointed out to us and says he's a, he's a Maya. Uh, he's a Maya. I just heard Maya. I didn't hear Maya archaeologists. And um, I, so I went home, and my grandpa I said, I told him that I, I met a, a, a Bosch Maya at St. Antonich. <laughs> and my grandpa, he's, he's a, he's a Kekchi Maya from the highlands of Guatemala. And he said, son, I, I don't know of any Bosch Maya. So clearly you were dreaming or something like that. You know. uh, Eventually, when I joined the archaeology ranks, I actually met a Bosch Maya again. So, <laughs> for those of you who do not do not know what Bosch is, uh, it means black in Maya. So. I'm here to present a award of recognition to Dr. Palacio. Could you please come up, Dr. Palacio, for his lifelong contribution in archaeology and anthropology? in Belize. And this is on the occasion of the first Belize National Research Conference. really humble by this uh, gesture coming from Mitch. Let me tell you what it has. Award of recognition presented to Dr. Joseph o. Palacio for lifelong contribution to archaeology and anthropology in Belize on the occasion of the first Belize National Research Conference on March 21 and 22, 2018. Let me assure you, I'll take it back to my house in Barranco, and it's going to be in a special place. Just my appreciation for this award. And just a word to all those students in this uh, auditorium here who, have, who I have taught over the years, please remember that and make sure I get an award too, OK? Thank you. <laughs> Can you feel the love in the room? At this point and in that same vein, I would also like to um, point out the contributions of another key individual in the working group, uh, Mr. Nigel and Kela. Nigel, um, most of us are already familiar with him and the work that he does. And thank him for being with us for the welcome ceremony. Could you please stand? Thank you. 